Vital signs are fundamental indicators of a patient's physiological status. In wilderness first aid, accurately recording these signs is essential for monitoring the patient's condition and making informed decisions about their care. We will cover the process of assessing five key vital signs, starting with the recording of the time assessment. The initial step in vital signs assessment is to document the exact time of the evaluation. This timestamp is a critical reference for tracking changes in the patient's condition over time. Level of consciousness. The level of consciousness is a critical vital sign in assessing a patient's immediate neurological status, especially in emergency and wilderness first aid scenarios. The level of consciousness gives first responders a quick and effective tool to gauge the patient's awareness and brain function. The AVPU scale is commonly used for this purpose. Let's delve deeper into each component of the AVPU scale, how it's applied, and the additional measure of orientation. A stands for alert. The alert level is the ideal state, indicating that the patient is fully awake and aware of their surroundings. An alert individual can open their eyes, look at you, and respond coherently to questions or commands. This level suggests the patient's brain is functioning well enough to recognize and interact with their environment. V, verbal response. If the patient is not fully alert but responds to verbal stimuli, they are classified under verbal response. This means if you speak to the patient or give them a command, they can respond in some manner. The response can be in the form of words, which may or not be coherent or simple sounds. The key factor is that the response is initiated by verbal stimulation. P, pain response. This level is used for patients who do not respond to verbal cues, but react to painful stimuli. The stimuli could be a pinch, a gentle rub on the sternum, or pressure on a fingernail bed. A response to pain indicates a lower level of consciousness where the patient brain only reacts to signals of physical discomfort. It's important to note that the response could be as minimal as a groan or withdrawal from the stimulus or a grimace. You, unresponsive. The most concerning level is when the patient is unresponsive to both verbal commands and painful stimuli. This indicates a profound impairment of brain function requiring immediate medical attention. An unresponsive patient shows no reaction to ex external stimuli, verbal or physical. Orientation assessment in conjunction with the APU scale. The orientation assessment adds another layer to understanding the patient's cognitive status. Being alert is one thing, but being fully oriented is a more specific condition. Orientation is typically accessed by asking the patient three questions. Name, can the patient state their name? This assesses personal orientation. Location, does the patient know where they are? This checks spatial orientation. And time, can the patient provide the current date, day of the week, or time of day? This evaluates temporal orientation. A patient who can accurately answer all three questions is considered fully oriented, denoted as A plus O times three. If the patient can only answer two questions correctly, they are noted as A plus O times two. One of the questions answered correctly, A plus O times one. And if not able to answer any of the questions correctly, A not O. This additional measure helps determine the level of cognitive impairment and assist in diagnosing the severity of the patient's condition. Write the patient's ADPU score on the SOAP note. In wilderness first aid where resources and immediate medical support may be limited, accurately accessing a patient's level of consciousness using the ABPU scale and orientation questions is critical. It provides essential information about the patient's neurological function and helps in prioritizing care, making evacuation decisions, and communicating the patient's status to emergency medical services. Now let's talk about measuring heart and respiratory rates. Accurately measuring heart and respiratory rates involve a discrete observation method to prevent altering the patient's breathing pattern. 
Patients tend to slow down their breathing when they know their breathing is being observed. By pretending to measure the pulse while counting breaths, both rates can be accurately assessed without the patient's interference. Position yourself so you can see your watch and the patient's chest while you're measuring a radial pulse. Count the number of heartbeats for 30 seconds. Remember this number and then count the number of times the patient's chest rises for 30 seconds. These rates are then recorded, doubling the count obtained in 30 seconds for a full minute's estimation. Skin assessment. Evaluating the patient's skin involves checking color, temperature, and condition at specific sites, such as the clavicle or inside the lower lip to accommodate varying skin tones. Observations of color, pink, red, or pale, temperature, cool, warm, hot, and condition, moist, dry, provides insights into circulation, hydration, and potential health issues. Record what you observe on the soap note. Establishing trends in vital signs is key. Determining the frequency of vital sign assessment is critical, especially following interventions for life-threatening conditions. For patients with concerning symptoms or unstable conditions, vital signs should be reevaluated every five minutes. For stable patients, assessments can be spaced out to every 15 minutes. This systematic monitoring helps identify trends indicating whether the patient's condition is improving or deteriorating. All observations and measurements are documented on the SOAP note. This detailed record is vital for tracking the patient's progress and facilitating communication with emergency medical services, ensuring continuity of care. Understanding and accurately recording vital signs are critical components of effective wilderness first aid this process not only aids in the initial assessment, but also ongoing monitoring, providing a clear picture of the patient's condition and guiding ongoing care decisions.